as I had mentioned before, the Ministry of Health recently published the Uganda National Health Survey, and it indicated that 3% of all women of reproductive age, reproductive age is those between the age of 15 and 49, suffer with infertility, which means that they will need external support before they can achieve conception or before they can get pregnant without delving into extremely medical terms. So this burden and the burden of, of childbirth, you know, infertility goes hand in hand with reproduction. So you can either reproduce or you may not be able to reproduce. And for us who come from the sexual reproductive rights movement, we know that there are three key elements when it comes to reproductive rights. The first one is the absolute right to have children. The second one is not to have children. And the last one is to raise these children in a good environment. And this is a concept that surrounds what we now refer to as reproductive justice. Our right to have a child is contained within the constitution of Uganda under Article 31, where everyone has a right to found a family as long as you are an adult. An adult is someone who is 18 years and above. But when you come down and begin to unpack reproduction in our country, the people who are extraordinarily affected by the burden of reproduction are always women. Right from when you are born, you're always given the burden of ensuring the continuity of our society by reproducing children, ensuring the continuity of your lineage, of your clan, by adding on to the numbers that are existing. Even our president once came out and told us in a press conference that we need to all produce. And indeed, Ugandan women have done very well and have produced so many children that our population is considered to be one of the most explosive in the country with a fertility rate of about 5.5 children. So this fertility rate means that every woman of reproductive age is awarded 5.5 children on average, whether you have given birth or not, which means that we are doing very well in terms of giving birth. But what we have not catered for in terms of reproduction are the people now who suffer with infertility and yet they continue to bear the burden of reproduction and are being pressured by society, pressured by everyone around them to have children. But because of circumstances beyond perhaps their control, they cannot have these children. This is not a choice that they willingly make on their own, putting aside those who choose not to have children out of their free volition.